All right, you beautiful humans. I really wanted to like this Thunderbolt Station 4 dock from CalDigit, and so the expectations were high. So would I recommend this for your M1, your Pro, Max, or the iPad Pro, or even a Windows device? Well, I bet you might have some concerns or questions and I want to address those. And the only way I could test this so soon was thanks to Jerry who loaned this to me. And I did run a se like several tests and data is going to be flying around on this Thunderbolt dock with 18 ports so that you could pretty much stay connected to your heart's content. Now, Jerry, I do want to thank you so much, my friend, and of course for the community. And if you'd consider visiting him because we have a lot of the con same content and it is very much aligned. Now let's give you a rundown of all the ports because I kicked the tires on all of these and I will say that I have adapted my workflow to not really needing USB type A ports, but I have plenty of peripherals that can take advantage of these four 3.2 Gen 2 ports that can also provide seven and a half watts of charging. And speaking of charging, we do have a substantial power brick so that we can get up to 98 watts of power to charge your device. And a couple of things to consider is that even though the MacBook Pro may have a higher ability to charge or at a higher wattage, this will just occur at a slower rate depending on the machine. And for those that have asked about whether this will damage a desktop, speak, speaking of the mini as an example, simply put, it will not draw from that power source when you plug it in into the host Thunderbolt 4 port. And speaking of Thunderbolt 4 ports, we do have two additional options here uh, for our peripherals. And I know some of you might want some additional IO at 40 gigabits per second, but let's understand that there is so much IO on this board, including three USB-C ports with the one here on the back, and there is two on the front at 10 gigabits per second. Also on the back, we do have the audio in and we have the headphone out. And flipping back over to the front, we do have an audio combo jack. And what I really liked here is being able to push these DT770 Pros that I have that are 250 ohms, which as I've said in previous videos, you need to have a preamp to be able to push these especially at 250 ohms. And although we did get our SD card readers back on the latest MacBook Pros, it is really nice actually having these UHS-2 and micro UHS-2 slots, which is great for the M1 lineup that don't have these built in. Now DisplayPort 1.4, in my opinion, is great. Although I know some of you would be more inclined to trade this for HDMI since it is a more common uh, IO or connection for most displays. However, what I will say for those that may consider an adapter or cable that's DisplayPort to HDMI, I did try this uh, with my adapter and I couldn't get it to work. And I don't believe this is an issue with the dock at this time. So I'm gonna have to retest this with a different setup, but I just wanted you to be aware of that in case you might be interested in doing something very similar. And I know that I give synthetic benchmarks a hard time, but here I'm gonna share them with you. And do keep in mind that I've already done a video on this and that these two Thunderbolt enclosures do have variations both on the controller side of things and the SSDs, which I've stated that the 980 Pro works really well in both enclosures, but do notice how the communication protocol with the fledging and the SN 850, where you'll see that drop in write speed through the dock versus being connected directly. And some of the earlier benchmarks that I did run on the 980 Pro in this enclosure were on a fresh format. So I know folks will question that there was nothing on the drive when I ran the initial benchmarks, so that they would be faster, but I went ahead and filled it up to 59% capacity and the benchmarks didn't change. And a quick pivot to the M1 lineup for both the M1 mini and the MacBook Air, you'll see that the dock didn't really add too much as far as the throughput on the Air when it comes to the write speed as we've seen with these M1 chips in the past, like pushing that, that throughput. However, on the mini, we did see a small bump in the write speeds through the dock here. And I did run this several times. And for those that already know about the throughput issues we've seen on this with these first gen chips from Apple, we have talked about it on this channel and I will direct you to those videos so that we can just kind of keep this moving. But moving on to transfers for over half of a terabyte of files and folders, and there is something interesting I found. So transferring from the SN850 to the 980 Pro, I was getting a peak write of about 1.8 gigabytes where it was throttling briefly after about 150 gigs that was transferred and then it would pop back up to 1.6 gigs on that write and then settle down to about one gigabyte 
to finish the transfer in eight minutes and nine seconds with the temps hovering around 56 degrees Celsius for the SN850 and the 980 Pro landing in 84 degrees Celsius, which of course it's being written to. So that's why you're gonna have the, that higher thermal. And going through the same task directly connected to the MacBook Pro, the peak write was 2.6 gigabytes per second, but then after about 120 gigs that were transferred, it hovered at around five to 700 megabytes per second for the remainder of that transfer in finishing at 11 minutes and eight seconds. And the thermals on the SN850 slightly cooler at 54 degrees Celsius and the 980 Pro still hanging out at 84 degrees Celsius. And this of course has to do with thermal throttling that I have seen in other tests, but it seems that the dock was actually helping in this scenario to just keep that transfer at a more steady throughput. And it seems that the SD card slots here are transferring at a higher write speed of about 160 megabytes per second versus a peak write of about 100 megabytes per second on the built-in from the MacBook Pro, but I do have some ProGrade cards coming in and I'd like to really test that um, on, on those cards. But I do have one more result that'll help us segue into the displays, and that's being able to connect external displays through the dock. But CalDigit is prioritizing the displays over other tasks, and I really appreciate this. So quickly touching on that, that same transfer with multiple displays running, this task took 11 minutes and 25 seconds to complete. So over a three minute difference and the write landed at about five to 600 megabytes per second for it to really finish. But there was no flickering or any observed issues that I could see on any of the displays. And this brings me into some additional testing where I had a 3440 by 1440 ultra wide and a 27 inch 1080p display connected through the dock while also having another 4K display that was connected through the HDMI out of the MacBook Pro and the refresh rate on the 1080p was testing at its advertised 240 Hertz, even when I was running other benchmarks in the background through the dock itself. And I had the two external displays running through the dock while playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider on an external USB Type-C 3.1 Gen 2 external SSD on that front USB-C port of the dock. And as I've said before, you can game on a slower drive, but this is a very graphics intensive game, especially on those Macs. And I had no problem loading the different levels. And again, no issues with the displays themselves while I was playing the game. And I'd like to take a quick run up the street on streaming. So it does seem that based on some forums that the cam link doesn't work well at, or really at all through these types of docks. And I don't have a cam link to test. However, I did test my capture card that I have right here. And what I will say is that I was able to stream at 1080 through OBS on Twitch and connecting this broadcast mic right here, I didn't have any disconnects or hangups. And of course I streamed for over an hour. And of course your mileage may vary here and the cam link, I really can't speak to it and I, I just don't have it in my possession. So I can only speak to some of the more budget friendly capture cards. In another pivot over to the iPad Pro, it didn't result in any issues that I could see. And yes, you can still get that gorgeous mirroring of the display. Certainly isn't the fault of the dock, thanks iPad OS. And I was able to have the Thunderbolt enclosures connected work just fine on the iPad. And I know that this may be more of a niche use case with the iPad, but since there is only one Thunderbolt connection, for the latest pros. I mean, this really gives you some options to get that work done that Apple originally intended. Now, the two and a half gigabit ethernet port here, and Pete, my friend, I am gonna have to just owe you on this one because not only are there intermittent outages in, like, in my area due to some construction, uh, so my gigabit internet is pretty much half right now, but I also have to upgrade my hardware in the studio and take advantage of that higher throughput beyond just gigabit switches, but transferring back and forth from my network attached storage, it was stable. And I even ran multiple tasks through the dock while trying to simultaneously transfer files back and forth on the NAS. And what I can offer you at this time is that it was stable throughout and I'm just gonna have to defer this like to another time when I can get the upgrades in. But here's the thing, I know a handful of you out there would love to see 
10 gigabit ethernet on this thing and I know where you're coming from, but I think the cost is going to be the factor here. And at $359, we're already in a territory where the discomfort on that wallet sets in. But for those that know me, my response is going to be about time as a priority with one Thunderbolt 4 cable connected to your device, giving you all of this IO and not just giving you ports for days, but actually using all of these ports as you would in a medium to heavy workflow it's a great return. And let me also point out that you've invested quite a bit into your machine. And so throwing like a cheap accessory at it, expecting similar results can really open up the possibility of frustration. And I'm not saying that in every case, more expensive is better, but after all the tests that I've run on the, on like hubs and docks on this channel, that the quality of the components along with R and D of Cal digits, previous iterations, it should be considered in this investment. And I have no direct connection to this brand. And it was Jerry that offered this device for me to test his device. This belongs to him. But regardless, I'm gonna always give you my thoughts and my only bias is ever whether a product does deliver on what it's intended to do along with the investment of time and money being returned. And I do think that we have a winning combo for the majority of users out there that are looking for the one and done with the available IO in a package that is able to prioritize the demands on each peripheral. And so I do hope to get one of these in very soon and I will get Jerry's back to him, but my testing will continue. And I will be heading out on another snowboarding trip by the time this video comes out, but I will be answering those initial comments at about 12,000 feet. And if you can get this dock at or close to the release of this video, then you are a lucky duck. But it does seem as if CalDigit will be releasing more soon. As always, you go out there and rock those faces. And I hope to see you right back here on the next one. Man, this was really cool of Jerry, wasn't it? I mean, I could just be some crazy cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs guy, like just making videos on the internet. <laughs>